Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. We are right back on the Solar Shop Conversion. This is a small little fabrication shop just to work on homestead projects. We've got a bigger shop in mind down the future at the New World Headquarters, if you guys have been watching any of those videos, but this is something we can work on. Smaller projects inside, out of the weather, with a little bit of heat, some light, and some power from our power station over here, and eventually some panels on the roof. Let's just, let's go, let's get into it. The first issue we're going to take on is this welding table. This is an eight foot diameter. It was a cable reel. We cut the tube off the other side. We've been using it for an outside welding table for years now and it's done really well, but obviously it's too big for the space. I'd love to build a three by five table at some point in the future. But right now, I think the best thing we can do with this is just cut half of it off. And luckily, it's actually got a bad half, so that'll be fine. So we got the power unit, it's an AC 300. So we're sitting right around 62 starting the day off. Go ahead and turn the AC power on for us. And there were a ton of concerns about that thing being in a cabinet and they're all right. They're all ready planned for and we'll address them in this video so you know what's going on. And yes, there's a hole in my pants. I think we can move past it. Some people worry about things that will never worry back, you know what? So for the time being, I'm just gonna cut this up in pieces that are small enough and easy for me to handle. We're just gonna throw them in the scrap pile. This side of the steel tubing is all swollen out. It's not square anymore. It's pretty pitted. It's Well, I save everything and I don't wanna save this. So I should tell the story. There we go. It's not bad. I don't think it's gonna be the permanent solution in here. I think a three by five would be the ideal size table in here. A lot of people recommended that. This will get me by for a little bit though. We'll have to do a little stiffening, but for a temporary thing, It'll work just fine. By the way, you saw me get the bandsaw blade stuck. If you ever get a bandsaw blade stuck like that, what I found works best is to just take the blade off the machine, then work the blade back out, and then put it back on. Otherwise, you're gonna tear up blades, and they can be kind of pricey. Um, I wanna do this next, which means we've also got to, uh, which means we need to do this. No, sorry, hold on. This. We need to do this. Not that these floodlights aren't doing the job, but some overhead light would certainly be a lot nicer. I just went with the 100 amp panel. If this were a house or a bigger shop, where I was gonna be powering more stuff off of it in the future, I'd jump up to a 200. But for what we're doing here, 100 amps plenty. We talked about it in the previous video. We do plan on getting on-grid power here at some point. This isn't some long-term off-grid solution. This is something to let us run a little 12 volt diesel heater, let us run some lights, some tools like we did with the bandsaw, the skill saw grinders, that kind of thing. And then we need to do heavy welding. We'll be running the Miller Legend over there off of the propane, which will also help charge our battery system up, which is a Blue Eddy AC300 and BC300. It's around eight to $10,000 to get electric to this building though. So this is just that temporary thing. But I wanted a system flexible enough that I could, one, move it off of here if I need to for another project, and two, take it over to the house for emergency power if I need to as well. With other systems that operate solar or alternative energy, you're always married to the building with your inverters, your charge controllers, and all the other components. With this system, it's all built into the system. So the only thing that's gonna be married to the building is the actual on-grid power setup, the, meaning the breaker panel and all the conduit. So we're gonna get started getting this breaker panel mounted up, then we can run some conduit, at least get the light circuit up, then we're gonna switch over to some insulation work after that. And then finish the electrical. We're just gonna jump around all over the place. That's what I'm thinking. We're just gonna run that in as if it's the actual service on the top side of the panel. I don't have a ground rod hooked up to it, but when we get an actual service, then we'll do the ground rod. Right now we're just running it back to the ground. On the unit itself, I gotta put the correct plug on the end of it, then we can plug it into that 30 amp plug. And that's gonna be my temporary hookup to my grid power. 120, well. 119.2, I'll take it. We'll unplug that for now. Which means I'm dead here. I'd like to put more than one of these in here, but I want to make sure I actually like the light first and it does what I want it to before I buy a couple more. $100 a pop, I need to make sure I'm happy with it. Now we're gonna put the switch over here by the door. Makes sense, right? That is. So we gotta get power from the panel over to here and then from here to that light. I don't mind doing conduit work. I could run MC, but I think MC never looks nice and neat. The only issue I have with conduit work is because I don't do it every day or often at all. 
I gotta relearn everything every time I do it. But I'd like to run it in conduit and keep it protected. That way if I bump into something when I'm in here working, I'm not uh, causing any issues with the wires in the long run. The only issue with running conduit every once in a blue moon is you gotta reteach yourself how to do everything. Yeah, I can hit that coupler this far away. Let's see. Oh, nice. Very nice. Fella starts getting a few extra offsets in 90s, it gets more difficult to pull wire. So I'm just going ahead and getting this pulled on this end. Get it caught up a little bit. And then I can go ahead and put the next couple 90s on. The next step, I'm going to put a box just before that light. I'll show you when I get her all done. But this will give me the ability to tie into it and add more lights when I need to. They make a little deburring tool to go around the inside of this, get all those little metal pieces off. I don't own one. They're fairly inexpensive, wouldn't be much to own one. I just take a round file, get all the sharp edges off, and then confirm it. I'm going to set that there so I can forget where I put it. Just make sure everything's going through good and straight. Just got to go down and get this section tidied up real quick and then we can go ahead and do the home run back to the panel. Alright, this one's got the 90 and then a little bit of an offset so we can get back to the panel. Alright, so it's actually a new morning. Didn't have a whole heck of a lot of time yesterday. I had to get, you guys remember that little stray dog that's been running around? A little beagle mix is what it looks like. Well, that feller knocked up our dog, which is wild because she's pretty old. Also a stray somebody dropped off. And she ended up having one pup Christmas morning, believe it or not. So yesterday I had to make sure he got to the vet and then had to go early to go pick them up. And a vet's about an hour round trip from where we live. So I didn't have a whole heck of a lot of time yesterday, just a few hours. We'll see if we can make a little bit more progress today though. And I do want to talk about, several people pointed out, this system, this Blue Eddy system does have some flaws, not flaws with their system, flaws with how I'm trying to use it here. By the way, none of this is on because it's all unplugged so we're not in a live panel right now and uh, they're right and there are some concerns I have I do have plans to address those concerns I just don't know if my plans are working out but we'll talk about that here in a second I want to make a line of tools like this that are magnetic you know and you can just right to the side of stuff there's one thing that brings out the comments it's any kind of trade work and I wonder if you scroll through the comment section right now how many people have a hard opinion about this Romex being in the conduit Latched in. I don't. How's that? How's that lighting? Yeah, it's it's terrible. I'm not putting in ten outlets in here, but I just kind of bought things, keeping in mind that we've got the YouTube yacht coming up. So one thing that's definitely going to be a little awkward with this setup is that thing auto shuts off after four hours. If it's not getting charged or it's not outputting, it turns itself off after four hours. Energy conservation makes sense. The issue of course is going to be if I'm gone for more than four hours, which is pretty likely, and I come back to flip this switch, well nothing's going to happen. So we're going to have to walk all the way over to that side, turn the unit on, and then come back and hit the switch. If this were the permanent long-term solution, I'd put the switch closer to the box. But since we're setting this all up for eventual on-grid power, we'll go ahead and run it over here. And then I had a bunch of components for the solar come in. My breaker slash shut off, my wiring, connectors. A lot of people say that Blue Eddy down the cabinet's gonna overheat. If it gets hot, you're right, but I'm a step ahead of you. It's an electrical cabinet cooling fan, so it'll go on that cabinet. If it doesn't need the fan on, we're not gonna turn it on. When it's just sitting there charging and taking in, when I asked them, they said as long as you have vents into the cabinet, 
the fans will pull it and it'll be fine. But if you start using it heavily, a little bit of extra cooling wouldn't hurt. So that's what we got. That's the way. Oh, that is a luxury. Wow. How many watts does that pull? 71. Pulls less than the... Uh... Pulls less than the floodlights do. Oh, wow. That's not bad lighting-wise. I don't hate it. I think uh, two more of those evenly spaced would be sufficient. It's the simple things in life, I know, but watch it. You ready? Off. On. Off. Okay. All right, that's gonna make a fella real happy. Well, next, let's do some of this insulation so we can get it the heck out of our way. We aren't trying to insulate this thing to be climate controlled 24 seven. And in fact, we never anticipate this building fulfilling that need. Remember, eventually we're gonna have a nice shop down at the gym. That's the long-term plan for a shop. All we're trying to do is put this little 12 volt diesel heater in here, enough to kind of take the chill off of the air. That's the only goal. So we have vented soffit on the outside. We got the bubble wrap insulation up on top. We're just taking some of this EPS. This is left over from the floor decking of the YouTube Yacht Project. And we're just shoving it up in there using a little bit of spray foam and getting it sealed up. That way, whatever warm air we pump in here, however limited it might be from that little diesel heater, it's not all just free flowing out to the open. And it'll help take that chill off to make it a little bit more comfortable than being out in the elements. And yes, I definitely considered making a hot wire cutter. In fact, I was at Walmart the other day and I almost bought a cheap hair dryer so I could take the nichrome wire out of the element, use the controls on the hair dryer for the heating element, use some PVC pipe and make one. I almost made one. Instead, I decided to just make my own snow, I guess. It's a mess, but it is what it is. Luckily, we got a plenty tall enough ladder here. Well, no concern of that falling. Let's not touch the panel. That's not going to be conducive for anything. Except electricity, I suppose. I can't remember if these are 10 or 8. I'm going to say 10. I would be correct. We'll just cut them in half. Why are you being like this? Okay. Just, you just, yep, no, that's good. Oh yeah, just like that. And I'll take some spray foam and lock it all in. We are exactly halfway around, including up on that gable end. Got those blocked off. And down to there. And that took one whole section of that light deck and I've got a whole section left. So in theory, that should be enough. Then we gotta figure something out for that ridge line. That other piece is all ripped up and ready to go, but before we work on this end, let's do another quick cleanup. I got some stuff ready to get out of the way. Just keep making some progress. These are just boxes of trash, but I'm gonna bag them so they don't get destroyed in the back of my truck. We've all been there. You got like a big box of awkward stuff. It's been sitting in your truck. It's been wet. You pick it up. The whole bottom falls out when you're almost to the dumpster. Oh yeah. We've all done it. I got these three sticks of number three bar left over from a project. We're going to cut them down into 10 foot lengths and we can put them over there in the vertical steel storage. So that is done all the way around the top, which is great. We still got to run the ridge. I still want to get that diesel heater hooked up. And I want to get one more good cleanup from where we're at now. But before we can do any of that, we got to punch a hole through that wall so I can do a little bit of half butted exhaust work out that wall and get that thing fired up because I need to run some charge back to that blue eddy. It says in the manual, it's best for the batteries if you keep the charge above 50%. And while I would hoped to get a start on the panels today so they could do a little trickle charging over the weekend. We didn't get that far. And we're at 26% right now. 
And we're gonna see if we can get that thing charging off the AC. The idea is that we would have been in here getting stuff ready to fab up, making brackets, bending brackets, doing whatever we need to do. And then once that's all ready to go on the welding table, we'd get that thing fired up. The solar panels would help kind of keep it trickle charged and help keep it built up. But then that thing is going to do the bulk of the heavy lifting as far as keeping those batteries charged. So we got lights. We'll have ventilation on that gable end. There's a ventilation fan coming. We can use all the electric tools and stuff like that and be comfortable and quiet and out of the weather. And then when it comes to the welding, we'll get that thing fired up. <laughs> I'm guessing the hole needs to go somewhere in that area. There's the exhaust right there sitting in an inch and a quarter. Oh, a flap wheel. Nice. I think I can get this piece to work for the time being. We're just gonna get this open. That's a little aggressive. Open back up a little bit. Try to get it on there. This is the exhaust off the 755, so I don't really wanna cut it and do anything too crazy because here coming up, hopefully it's going back on there for me. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think it'll get the job done until I've got some exhaust orders and flex pipe that'll fit on that real nice and go out and we can make it look good, but it hasn't come in yet. So well, that'll get us through today though. Well, let's see what happens. Believe it or not, it's quieter, obviously, because the exhaust goes out the wall. I mean, it's still loud, but. It look cool to have a flapper mounted on the side of the building. So this is what the AC adapter looks like for it. Just a regular plug on this end. And that's what we've got there. We'll get that hooked in. Let's see if it likes this. Grid voltage low. Okay. So that's too low of a voltage. Man, that might not work the way I wanted it to. Let's, let's try something different. There we go. 1700 watts coming in. Where it says grid, that's what's coming in. Where it says AC load, that's what's going out. Where it says PV, that's what would be coming in if we had the panels hooked up. And the DC load should be what shows up whenever we hook a little 12 volt heater up. The issue, so there is a little bit of an issue there with the way I wanted to run this. The run Y welding outlet is not enough for that to charge off of. It recognizes that it's there, but it sends an alarm and says low AC voltage. It charges great off of the regular outlets, but those outlets do not work if you have an arc struck. Once it idles up, those outlets shut off. The question is, do those outlets shut off before it idles up and surges power or after? Because if that sets up to where it automatically shuts that outlet off before the voltage increases, then that should be okay no different than plugging it or unplugging it. But if it surges in voltage before that outlet kicks off, then I think that's gonna mess with the batteries. I think I might hook a voltmeter up to it and just see what happens. That way I know. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let that thing charge up a little bit, get it back over 50%. It shouldn't take too crazy long, an hour or two with 1700 watts pumping into it. And then we'll put a voltmeter on that, on the extension cord, unplugged from the unit, and we'll see what happens to that voltage when that outlet kicks on and off. I do think it's worth pointing out that you saw that. I put that AC load into it off of the use while welding outlet. The machine said, hey, I don't like this. It sent off the alarm and it isolated that circuit. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's designed to do. If it's got too much coming in, it's gonna shut it off. If it's got not enough coming in, apparently, that's the thing too, it's gonna shut it off. If it's got too much going out, it's gonna shut it off. If it overheats, if something's going on with it that it doesn't like and the safety parameters they have programmed into it, it's gonna shut that function off. Does that mean there's still a potential for a catastrophic failure? Yep, absolutely. But seems like they've got a heck of a lot of safety features built into this thing. And I kind of like that. I don't know how those features hold up over time, but the only way I can know is if I get it, I use it, and we just kind of see what happens. You guys can know if you just keep watching the channel. So we're up to a beautiful 62%. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect. So we're picking up 114, 115 right now. And if I flip that over to run, 
which is the same as if I went to strike an arc. I want to know if this spikes or if it drops instantly. Then we'll switch it back. And then it takes a minute to idle down. Then the outlet is back on. And if we struck another arc, Look at this, huh? Come on. Room to work? I want to go ahead and get that diesel heater mounted. I'm not going to have enough time because we got a basketball game we got to get to tonight. I'm not going to have enough time to try it out, but I want to at least get the shelf built and make sure the wiring setup is going to run. And I want to mount it over here by the Blue Eddy. And there's a reason for that. Somebody made a comment and they're spot on. And it says it in the manual because he has a Blue Eddy, so I guess he knows this. But below 32 degrees, that machine is not supposed to let itself charge. If the batteries feel like they are too cold, if the batteries feel like they're below 32 degrees, that won't let any charge go in, AC or DC. It doesn't want any of it. That's kind of an issue whenever we're trying to build something that works in the winter months as well. So my solution to that, and I'm not 100% sure it's gonna work or not, it's in the cabinet, which helps hold a little bit of heat in. But my other thought, is with the diesel heater, I want to put it close enough that I can pipe a little four inch duct down into there. So when it's super cold, we get down in the teens or those single digits, which is rare for us, but does happen every year. I can just pipe that down in there, let it run for a little bit, warm the machine up, and then hopefully it'll start to accept that charge. I don't know if it's gonna work, but aside from spending $5,000 on good insulation and an HVAC unit and another 8,000 on enough power to uh, power that HVAC unit where we can heat and cool this thing 24 seven, that's the best I got. This thing has an exhaust and intake on the bottom. I feel like it fuel holes. Probably I'll drill oh, just a couple big holes because this is going to need some room. Probably shouldn't be pinched off like that. We'll just use the hole saw. This is like a through hole for a boat for an exhaust. Um, and this exhaust pipe fits absolutely perfect on there. Found that online, people using this setup. It'd be a miracle if I can do this and not lose any of those screws. And then this is the little intake tube that goes on there to draw fresh air in. And it comes with this little just fanciest piece of ductwork right here. Huh? You can elephant trunk that wherever you want. And then the 12 volt fuse, that's nice, power supply off the back, 
we can drop it right down inside that cabinet and I'll have to either purchase or rob a cigarette outlet, cigarette lighter outlet charger style contraption. Man, the words really failed me on that one and wired up to that because that's what the 12 volt is on there. And then we should have the power we need for this rig. Next video, finishing up the electric, running some more conduit, getting some outlets in place, getting that heater finalized, set up, and running. I basically want to get it rough in so we can get it finished up real quick at the beginning of the next video, get it fired up, and see what she does for this little space. Getting a hinge countertop built on the AC300 and BC300 with the ventilation fan as well. Maybe the ventilation fan up top if that thing comes in, and some other odds and ends to just kind of tie and finish this whole thing out. This is going to work itself into the dump truck build, and the dump truck build will work itself into the YouTube yacht because I wanted to be back on the YouTube yacht by early to mid March, just because, in my experience, my five years of doing home construction full time, anything between uh, mid December and early March, it all takes twice as long because of the weather, whether it's cold, whether it's soupy, whether it's whatever. That time period just sucks to build. There's no other way to say it. So I wanted to hold off till March, and timing wise, that's looking pretty good for everything we got going on. Hope you guys are enjoying this build, and I hope I see you on the next one. Oh, I went to go mark the holes for the uh, screws in there, and the paint pen exploded. So that's something, you know?